Today we talk task-based learning. Hello and welcome to Teacher Learning Cast. Uh, episode number 24 today is October 6th, 2018. My name is Benjamin Stewart calling from beautiful Aguascalientes. Good morning, everybody. This is Peter Herrera, also here in Aguascalientes. A fresh morning today. Uh, hoping you are you are all finishing activities for this week, getting ready for the weekend. And I know many of you are still teaching Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, we've got a good uh, show for you today. We're going to talk about task-based learning and uh, throw throw around a few other key terms uh, that are fairly new to me. I think it's worth mentioning, uh, maybe sharing some experiences that we've had with regard to task-based learning. But before we get into that, uh, remember that you can be a part of this broadcast, not only the live show, if you want to be part of the uh, live broadcast that we do every Saturday morning, you can find the link in our uh, Facebook page. If you search Teacher Learning Cast, you can uh, find that link as well as all prior uh, videos that we produce every week. And so feel free to leave comments, leave us some feedback if there are topics that you want uh, to hear uh, from us, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, better yet, uh, feel free to do that in Facebook and uh, let us know uh, how you view the show. And uh, again, give us uh, give us some feedback. We're always open to uh, to comments that you might have. Right, we, we invite you to follow us in our, on our uh, social networks. We have uh, mainly our, our websites and uh, different platforms in which we have teacher learning cast playlists. And uh, <clears throat> uh, if the, I think the easiest way to go is just to Google teacher learning cast Benjamin Stewart or teacher learning cast PD Herrera, and you will find a whole list of uh, our sites and playlists where you can follow us and uh, see previous shows, make comments, and um, uh, find our contact if you want to email us or whatever. Yes, and um, I just recently, this week, in fact, uh, started putting up all of our prior episodes in a website called Anchor. And Anchor is a podcasting site which also pushes uh, all of the podcasts out to various other uh, platforms. And so feel free, to, if you're using a podcasting site, for example, Spotify, you can find uh, if you search the podcast in the classroom, you'll find all of the prior episodes and podcast form. form. Uh, this will be just audio only. So those are going to be for those who uh, want to uh, just listen to the audio. Um, I think the best experience is what to watch the video because obviously uh, there's a lot of things we're displaying. But for those who want just audio only, uh, we're going to be making all of our uh, prior broadcast available through those uh, different platforms. And so I'll show you here, in fact, I'm not sharing my screen right now, but I'll show you here in a few minutes, um, the, the website Anchor, but you can find us on, and I'm pulling it up here as I'm discussing it. Okay, here's the, uh, the list of podcasts that you can find us on. Uh, Breaker, Google Podcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, and Stitcher. So if you're already using some of those platforms, uh, if you search for the podcast in the classroom, you'll find all of our prior uh, podcast from Teacher Learning Cast. Yes, we've been discussing different topics during this is episode number 24. So we've been having several topics along all these talks uh, Saturdays morning. And you can go back and if you want to retake, you want us to retake a topic or you want to ask a question, or if you want to... Uh, add yourself to the conversation like uh covering once again some of the things we have seen before we can do it we can uh, get into uh, an arrangement in in that and um, go back through prior topics lately we've been discussing about reflection a lot right and um uh and today well uh i think uh we are going through an interesting topic uh, which is task-based learning yeah so let's uh, dive right into it and um one of the things that sparked my attention this this week um, was an interesting activity, uh, PD. In fact, you and uh, our friend and colleague, Maestro Luis Humberto, who's also a tutor, uh, an activity that you guys 
I created for some of our students. And I'm trying to find the photo here because I had a really good photo. There we go. Um, but you, you created this opportunity where you had first semester students that we're just starting in the BA with our uh, meet with our Prope students so that they could interact with each other and share strategies uh, as to how to be more successful in Prope. And I thought that was a really good activity. And so I wanted to kind of piggyback on that activity that happened last week, or actually two weeks now almost. Um, and I created a, an essential question for my Prope students this semester, for this week rather, um, that is as follows. What strategies can be used to be successful in Prope? So I wanted okay, to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just for the audience that is not really familiar with our program, we do have a propedeutical year with the students who are, are focuses only on language development. And then we start with what we call first semester, which in which they start uh, to prepare in, um, in all the areas, methodological and practical areas for actual teaching. So this, this uh, activity was with the students that are already in first semester to give a little bit of support to the students which are just in the propedeutical semester. Sorry, man, go ahead. Oh, no, yeah. And thanks for clarifying that. And the prope year is basically divided into courses that focus on individual skills, right? So we have a class in listening and speaking, we have a class in reading, a class in writing, we have a grammar class, and we have a, uh, a learning strategies class. So the students that are taking uh, prope this semester, I have a writing class that I wanted to have them share and write about the different learning strategies that they're not only learning in their other class this semester, but also any strategies that they discussed last week or the prior week with first semester students. And again, the first semester students were those who took Prope the year before. So the idea was to try to have first semester students give some insight and some guidance, if you will, to our current Prope students to perhaps give them some ideas about strategies. So this week, I really wanted to focus on my students to write about learning strategies uh, for this week. So again, the, the central question for this week, what strategies can be used to be successful in Prope? This was the guiding question that we worked on throughout the week. And we, when we talk about task-based learning, I kind of wanted to take you through um, the process this week as we as we led up to having our students develop a a paragraph around answering this one central question and again just for the just to clarify this particular course this semester the objective really is to help students develop uh, a paragraph right so they're they're not even writing uh, essays at this point uh, they're really learning about developing good sentences and paragraphs um, and in terms of academic writing or formal writing so, so this was the topic, this was the, the project, right, if you will, for this, this week. And the idea was to, at the end of the week, uh, have them develop a learning strategies guide. So, so let, me, let me take you to the first, uh, the first day on Monday, what we looked at. And I had our students, because I knew the idea of, the word success, I was really kind of thinking about how students might interpret the word success, right? So I'm going to show you here. I've got a class photo album that I use that I share all of the board work and different pictures that uh, that we uh, that pertain to the class. But let me show you on day one the word cloud. So, so the idea on, on day one on Monday was to really look at this idea about what is success and what does it mean to be successful uh, in terms of this particular uh, essential question. And so I had students think about individually key words that came to mind, kind of a word association uh, around the word success. And so this word cloud that you see here on the board is really a result of uh, students coming together from using their list and consolidating all of the different words that came to mind. Then we had a whole group discussion around 
which kinds of words might be more be might be better for uh, thinking about uh, what is success? Thinking about some some kind of term that can be measured, that can be observable, uh, and not so abstract. And so we had a discussion, and you see here words like hope, optimism, hard work, uh, uh, goals, setting personal goals, actions, and so on. Some of these words came up. Organization was another big term. But I wanted to compare and contrast with some of uh, our students about which of these words were more concrete than others, which words were more abstract than others, so that they could really think about um, what it is to be successful. So that so when they start thinking about their own paragraphs, they were more specific. That was really the the end goal here was trying to make sure that when they developed their topic sentences, which we weren't talking about on day one. Um, they would be more, um, they would have some terms, some words, some vocabulary that they could use that would be more concrete and more specific. Mm -hmm. So this was basically day one. Um, and uh, there are, I actually have two different groups for, for writing wine. And we both, uh, both groups really came up with similar, similar terms. In day two, on Tuesday, we started diving into developing the paragraph of working in teams. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, this is a picture of uh, the classroom. In fact, any, this is a picture of a typical classroom uh, experience that I have where students are working in teams. We have, uh, a, fortunately, we have a technology here that we can broadcast and show on the big screen, uh, uh, internet, the internet. And in this case, we were using a Google Docs. And I also have, on my iPad, I'm, I have access to the same document, so I can provide feedback here, or I can display it uh, here as well. And uh, so students can access the same document using their cell phones, and it might be hard to see, but many of the students have their cell phones that they're using uh, to, to work and in real time contribute. So students were divided into three te for teams of three, and they were creating their own paragraph. So each team created one paragraph. Each team of three would create their own paragraph around this one particular question. And on Tuesday, we started looking at the development uh, of, let's see if I have a picture here, should have one. This might be hard to read, um, but the students were to consolidate different reasons. They, they were looking at this prompt uh, subject plus verb plus because and then students would list reasons. So students had to form a, an opinion about strategies using, uh, using the connector because to list different reasons. And this is how they came together. They started creating this topic sentence based on, on that information. Again, the key terms that they talked about on Monday were to be used in this uh, topic sentence that would create the main idea for their for their own paragraph. Sorry, Ben. At this point, did you make any connection with the activity they had with the first semester students, sharing their their suggestions and and their and having questions for them the day they got together? Uh, well, yes and no. You know, thinking back on on that, I I didn't spend a lot of time. I, I did mention it. I asked them to think about. There are conversations that they had uh, with first semester students, and of course, any uh, learning strategies that were they were learning in the other course. But we didn't do a specific brainstorming activity based on strategies on on those. What I wanted to try to do was to tie in any knowledge that they had with uh, learning strategies to this idea of success. So I didn't really make that explicit, but it, it was kind of intentional because I wanted them, I, I was curious to see how they would articulate this word or interpret this word of uh, success and and looking at how they would, you know, would success for them be what, you know, just being able to use a, a strategy or would success be a, a strategy that led to something else that they would consider <laughs> as success, okay. so if that makes sense. So I, I knew time was also a factor because they really need a lot of time just in the act of writing. 
And so I, I actually spent a lot of time just on this idea of what is success, which was really a question that I kept coming back to the entire week because as they were going through the writing process, they, they were still um, struggling a bit to articulate specifically what, what success was and then the reasons behind <clears throat> that success. So, um, so yeah, that I, I didn't spend a lot of time on just drawing out those uh, simply because I knew, well, at least I assumed, which I, it turned out to be the case, that they were going to struggle a little bit about this, this notion of success and what that, what that actually means. Okay, so, and then, sorry, sorry, Ben. And then you had with the stage of the brainstorming. Is that was that an individual? Well, I mean, it was a group brainstorming. Was but was that an individual process of thinking, or was that also pairs or groups? Yeah. So they started off as an indiv as an individual. Uh, let me go back to the. Let me go back to the. Uh, yeah. well, for the audience, very quickly, we're talking about students who are in propedeutical year, which is a year only for the development of English language before starting everything related to methodology and actual teaching. But still, they uh, they do have this sample of uh, strategies and uh, different ways of teaching from our teachers. I mean, the teachers that are teaching them the language at that year. Right. And uh, these students are typically at about an A2 level, uh, according to the Common European Framework, just to, mm -hmm. to provide context there. But yeah, this going back to the the this is another screenshot, in fact, because this is from the other class, but it was very, very similar, uh, the mm -hmm. words that they came up with. But this word cloud was done individually. So students were asked individually, what do you think success is? And what, you know, what do you, uh, you know, what words would you associate with those? And we, the students really did two things. They came up with these these words these keywords, we had the whole group discussion about which words were quote unquote better in the sense that which ones were more concrete, which ones were more specific. And then I did ask them individually to create one sentence with this because uh, connector or uh, subordinated conjunction so that uh, they were to write a subject plus a verb then this clause because and then list reasons so this was all done individually first and i asked them to create uh basically two reasons to support their their opinion which again the opinion would be the subject and the verb uh, clause so so this was all done individually on 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 monday right. and then on tuesday they divided into groups of three or four and they compared their sentences and each since each student had two reasons as a group as a team they would have anywhere from six to eight reasons total as a group so i asked them the first thing that they were asked to do was to consolidate those six six to eight reasons into three to five reasons mm -hmm. that they could then turn into a topic sentence for their paragraph that they would would be uh, completing as a as a team, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah. so they're going to be using the same sentence: subject plus verb plus because, and then their reasons, three to five reasons. So on day two, they were to then consolidate that into one topic sentence, but decide as a team which would be the reasons, because uh, each team member was was assigned to. Uh, to complete two sentences for this paragraph. So again, they're working together to create one paragraph. Each team member is to complete two sentences. They decide who completes which type of sentences. Um, but as a team, they must have a topic sentence. They have to have detailed sentences, and then they need a, a summarizing sentence at the end. And then so they're choosing the, the reasons they're choosing the keywords, right, that are concrete and specific enough, right? And they're to then decide which type of sentences that they are to create in order to, to uh, develop a unified, coherent, and cohesive paragraph. Okay, so that's then where the, the language came in. So on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, really, that's where we started uh, digging into 
the types of sentences, how sentences are connecting and transitions and uh, just writing more coherently and cohesively. Uh, a lot of the discussions were related to language, but it, it was, I, it was, I was, I think, surprised a little bit about how much we kept coming back to the initial question of what is success, really thinking about which words can they use in order to be a little bit more specific, to be concrete, in order for them to create these examples that they needed to for, for this particular assignment. Um, it's important to mention that students were also given this handout, uh, this graphic organizer, uh, where this kind of prompted them when they're developing their paragraph to uh, make sure that they include not only reasons to support their opinion, but also examples. So this particular graphic organizer, I think, was good because it showed that the topic sentence that we talk about a lot is their opinion. Mm -hmm. Then they were to include three to five reasons and include examples for each of those reasons. So they use this graphic organizer. We used it in class in order to articulate how they were to then uh, include several reasons and to make sure that they include examples. And that was another thing that we talked a lot about this week. Uh, I helped guide them to see the, really the difference between what is a reason and what is an example. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, another language focus for this week. But the, the thing here, tying it back into uh, test-based learning. I came across an article that I think was uh, really interesting and it made me kind of think in terms of what I did this week with regard to what they refer to as instructional learning episodes. And they came up with eight different uh, instructional learning episodes, uh, basically four categories. The first one being reproductive to productive. The second being knowledge and skill the third being metacognitive and cognitive, and the fourth being far and, and near transfer. And let me go just quickly to kind of describe the differences here between these two. Some of them are pretty obvious, but the first one, reproductive and productive, basically the difference being a reproductive episode or task um, would be something where students are asked to memorize or it's more of a type of rehearsal. So there's not, there's no, it's not really related to generating uh, a greater awareness of how and when or why something happens. It's more just more rote learning, if you will. Okay. Uh, the second, knowledge and skill is fairly straightforward. So just distinguishing between knowledge and skill. In, in our case, it was the knowledge of learning strategies. Um, it might even be uh, the knowledge of writing conventions, like what are transitions, what what is a verb even, what is a noun, uh, knowing kind of the declarative knowledge of language, as well as uh, the learning strategies. And then the skill, of course, is the actual ability to, to write uh, the, the paragraph and express one's ideas. Okay. Then we have metacognitive and cognitive, right? So the difference between learning how to learn versus just the learning activity uh, itself. Um, here, using the graphic organizer uh, would be a little bit more towards the cognition part and just the process of writing and the process of thinking and brainstorming uh, would be related a little bit more to the cognition part. Mm -hmm. uh, the metacognitive would be thinking about how they work together as a team thinking about how who's going to do what and how and that thought mm -hmm. process uh, would be more in line of uh, the metacognition far and near transfer is interesting uh, the difference there being near transfer would be students are able to use their current knowledge and skills and something that is very familiar with uh, mm -hmm. to them so context that they're very familiar with versus far context that is new you know being able to uh, have students adapt their knowledge and skill base into new context. And uh, here, a lot of the things that we do or that we did this particular week was familiar to them in terms of um, working online, working in groups and uh, sharing and brainstorming. Mm -hmm. the, the new piece for this week, I think the context that might have been a little bit new for them was to take this idea of learning strategies and the idea of success and try to really articulate that into some concrete uh, terminology or vocabulary that, that could be understood. And so um, 
I know I'm, I'm I'm throwing out a lot of information, Petey. I don't know if, yeah. if you have some some questions or comments at this point. No, I'm having a clear picture of what you are going through here. Just I, I just wanna uh, uh, maybe if you go on with this city of the article, uh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I I pretty much the article is the the one thing I just wanted to mention are, are essentially those. Uh, episodes, these instructional episodes, uh, without getting too much into the article itself. Right. But I, I think it's interesting to to really articulate what test based learning is. I like how they looked at these eight different instructional learning episodes mm -hmm. because thinking back on my experience this week, I look at you know there are many objectives and 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 I think that what I did this week with my students is considered task-based learning, but it's not necessarily like everybody's doing the same task at the same time, going, mm -hmm. doing one thing to the next, that, that students really, you know, some groups progressed faster than others, you know, every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, even the last day that the assignment was due on Friday, you know, I would have very different conversations with uh, different groups, depending on where they were in the process. And so I think that, um, you know, one of the things that I that I, I liked about this week was that uh, I felt like students could go at different paces, different you know, different speeds, and and at, based on their their level and level of understanding and their how they were working together. Um, but it's not necessarily the case where everybody was actually doing exactly the same thing at at the same time, and 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 every cl every class, you know, every activity everybody was doing the same thing. It was very much kind of a more fluid approach, I think, with students kind of asking questions. Like I would invariably go back to the first question, what is success, uh, even on Thursday and Friday with some students, uh, going back to that as they were developing their paragraph. Um, you know, we would be talking more uh, about language in some cases with some students when we're looking at uh, transitions, looking at sentence connectors and uh, introductory phrases and so on. So, um, I think that the, the, this week was I probably, and I'm waiting to get some of the feedback, uh, every week, my, these students also write in their reflective journal. So I'll, I'll get some feedback about how they felt about this week, but I do know that this was a challenge. Uh, I think more cognitively really than, than actually just the writing process. Um, just trying to get their heads around, again, what is success, and then distinguishing between what is a reason, thinking about that connector because, and then listing reasons, and then distinguishing reasons with, um, with examples, with concrete right. examples. And those examples really was the whole point getting to the learning strategies, right? So the mm -hmm. examples, we kind of worked backwards. Instead of really focusing at the very beginning, this is kind of going back to your question about, about well, did you, you know, what did you, how did you, you know, connect students, yeah. what they were talking about with first semester students? I'm, I'm hoping, and this is something I want to see, is how they connected those conversations and, and what they know now about learning strategies, what they've learned so far this semester, how they brought those into the examples uh, and for this particular uh, exercise. And they're doing that, right? They're, they're doing that, but I didn't make, the, make it that explicit. I wanted them to think in terms of, again, this idea of what is success and then reasons and then examples and just have them kind of draw it out of them, uh, so to speak. Um, and I think that, uh, I think it's been successful in that case, right? I think they actually struggled more with just the concept of success and really, again, trying to formulate and organize their ideas in a coherent fashion, uh, around an opinion about, about success. Right. I, I think you're covering many aspects in here. As you mentioned, it's a lot of information, but it's given us a, a uh, a picture of uh, precisely uh, uh, how to handle this task in the classroom. Um, uh, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, precisely that's one of the objectives, one of the main characteristics, but at the same an objective for class-based learning, which is uh, that students themselves bring up uh, what it's to be learned. 
the specifics about what it's to be learned. And this, what you mentioned, that they uh, work at, in different things at different moments, different levels. They bring up different concepts, different ideas, different learning strategies at the end, which was part of the objective. Uh, this gives me the sense that it's uh, kind of being successful. We, we will wait for the feedback from students, but but anyhow, uh, I think that's precisely one of the characteristics. As, as I understand, the, the main difference is from traditional uh, teaching, which we can go through the idea of presentation, practice, and production, is precisely that. In, in that, in, in, from that view, presentation, practice, and production, it, the teacher is the one that just states the language or the aspects that have to be learned. And then uh, in the practice, they go through control activities till, get, till they get to freedom but based precisely on the prior presentation, which is teacher's statement of what is to be uh, used in the classroom. And, and that's the main difference with the task-based learning, which is where, where the teacher uh, focuses mainly on the task. Obviously, it has to be a well-considered and thought task so that it, uh, it focuses on the, on the objective precisely for the course or the, uh, the dif different aspects of the course. And then, um, uh, start uh, having students work on it somehow with the support and guidance from the teacher himself, and but let them responsible for whatever is to be learned and developed in the specifics. Transferring this idea, well, it, this requires a wide view. This requires the teacher to be really understanding what what it's uh, where classes are heading. Not a class, but classes. Uh, uh, maybe a part of the course, maybe one of the objectives of the course, maybe one segment of the course, but it requires precisely a, a good control of a wide view of where we are heading. The other aspects that I see from what you mentioned is a flexibility. It requires a lot of flexibility in the sense that uh, time and organization may vary a lot since the students may have, as you mentioned, different paces, different strategies actually to go through the task itself. And so I think uh, it looks like a good example of task-based learning in that sense. And, um, um, but we, I, 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 will wait also for, I would wait also for the comments uh, from the students because uh, I don't know how, how familiar they are with these kind of approaches. Right, and uh, it, I, I also looked, you mentioned uh, PPP, right? And I, I did come across uh, the British Council. They have uh, at uh, www.teachingenglish.org.uk. Uh, they contrast, in fact, um, test-based learning with some problems, typical problems that are associated with uh, PPP or presentation practice yeah. and production. And you know, they mentioned here some of the problems with PPP being that uh, students can give the impression that they are comfortable with new language as they are producing it accurately in the class. Mm. Um, often, though, as few lessons later, students will either not be able to produce the language correctly or even won't produce it at all. The second thing they mentioned is students will, will often produce a language but overuse the target structure so that it sounds completely unnatural. Exactly, yeah. And the third thing they mentioned, students may not produce the target language during the free practice stage because they find they are able to use existing language resources to complete the test, which I find is interesting. They might, you know, how, how much do we know, you know, when they're actually producing that what they're producing was what they just learned or, or did they already know that? Okay. And so um, I think that that it's important to, and I, especially with uh, teacher training too, like is that students are aware of these other approaches, problem-based learning, test-based learning, that they are experiencing some of these and, and testing and trying these out so that they, they don't necessarily all gravitate to this PPP approach th and, um, and thinking in terms of kind of a more linear approach to, to language learning. Um, but you know, I think that, you know, there's many aspects here of this week that, that came to mind that, um, that I, I wanted to share. I'm not going to be able to share everything here, but uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention was also the way in which I gave feedback uh, to the group because it, it kind of morphed and, and, and emerged throughout, which is, is common, I think, in a lot of the things that, that I do with my class. But 
the the one thing let me show you two things here one in uh google classroom mm -hmm. i think this was, uh, was on thursday i'm going to go to the stream here and i created a, a video Mm -hmm. of an example in fact so i created a paragraph i did i did the assignment just as uh, my students were doing and um i i'm going to just show you a clip because we're i know it's going to be a little bit problematic i think to show show this video in uh, doing a google hangout but i wanted just to give you an idea about what it looks like but i basically did an analysis of the paragraph that I created. Okay. So it was kind of a um, kind of a think aloud exercise where I, I'm basically reflecting and explaining what I did and how I did it, why I did it. And so if I can just, I just want to show you a, a part of the video. So I basically did a screencast showing showing the the actual paragraph and then you'll see here where i where i have annotations and it's taking just a second here because my internet's a little slow here so bear with me but here you see a list okay i don't know if you can see this right you can see yeah. some of the notations there yeah. so i've circled using different colors and mm -hmm. and talking about different aspects of the paragraph trying to explain uh what i did how i did it and basically showing them what they ought to do with their own paragraph, how they can analyze and, and kind of see if they're doing what they need to, to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I provided this example as one way of kind of guiding them. And we didn't really talk about it in class, but I made it available in Google Classroom, asking everyone on their own to uh, watch the video. And right. so that was one way of providing some feedback as to the whole group, looking at the different aspects of the paragraph and really zeroing in on what I was looking for, for their own work. Right. So that was one thing that I, that I did. And then throughout the week, let me go back to the pictures here. I would, uh, I would, uh, you, I would write up on the board, certain things, certain aspects to either avoid or to include based on what they were giving me basically. So, so I, I didn't really give them a lot of information and a lot of this, in fact, everything that we talk about, everything you see on this, on this, like avoid contractions, avoid the verb to be and to have in the topic sentence, um, mention prope students, uh, state the reasons and examples. But many of the things we talk about, we've talked about all semester, a lot of the language uh, things, especially comma usage, the punctuation aspects capitalization. So a lot of the things are repetitive, which is fine. That's part of the process. We, we kind of recycle some of the, the, the feedback uh, topics, the things that we look at and need to correct. Um, but the, uh, I didn't, you know, they, the students know they've, they've heard a lot about what, what, what they should and shouldn't do, but it's, it's almost this, uh, they need to go through that process of, of recycling and, and, and that's just part of the learning process. But um, the the main thing I wanted to stress in this exercise was the use of vocabulary that mm -hmm. they really produced or created as a group, the, the vocabulary from the beginning, again, on Monday and Tuesday. And we pretty much stuck to that same vocabulary throughout the week. Um, and again, in terms of what is success and, and what, what kind of topics that they were uh, discussing. Oh, so, which, sorry, yeah. Ben, which kind of resources were they allowed to use to get information about success? Any, anything, any, you know, they, they have access to the internet. They have, you know, I, I talk almost every day about dictionary.com, which is one of my favorite apps that I suggest to all my students to use that they can install on their phones. So they use dictionaries, they use their class notes and other classes. You know, of course, they're use they're learning learning strategies in the other course. So, of course, all of those types of topics uh, can be used. Um, so, the I don't use any specific. You know, the websites are so many websites. Uh, I'll, I'll come across um, for this particular week. I'm trying to think. There was not a, a very specific website that we used, um, but 
you know, they, I, my students are always encouraged to use YouTube, to Google, or, right. uh, you know, to, to use various websites online mm -hmm. to try to find, you know, just, keywords. Just, just, ben, to, satisf to satisfy my curiosity, do, do you know if anybody uh, happened to ask somebody outside the class itself? I mean, besides classmates and you, did anybody ask another teacher or other classmates from other semesters? I, I didn't bring that up only because the week before actually was we had uh, the students were asked to a, an interview okay. people that were really close to them to oh. find out what uh, how other people felt about their own strengths. That was the the focus of the prior week. So students uh -huh. were were they all of the input, everything that they wrote about for that particular week had to come from other people. And so that was the main focus. They spent a lot of time interviewing other people for that particular yeah. week. So I didn't uh, bring it up this week. Actually, I didn't even think about it because we right. kind of had that. Uh, but, uh, but what, what I mean is that it would be good to find out just uh, if you had the opportunity to ask them just to know what kind of impact this, this activity and maybe the prior activity is having on them because, uh, I, if it happens that somebody actually asks somebody else, maybe they are actually going back to the prior week idea somehow by their by their own. Mm -hmm. Right. No, that's a good point, and um, I I hope that's something that they reflect in their weekly reflections. But again, it wasn't something I brought up, so mm -hmm. um, I I would be surprised. I mean, it would be great to hear from them. I, I may ask them though. I may. Right. Um, you know, this week actually took more than any week. In fact, mm. took more. I felt like I needed more time for this particular uh, exercise. And so, so, you know, looking back on it, if the, the that was the unexpected thing really was how much time uh, I they really needed again, because this was just this was, I think, required a little bit more critical thinking than than prior weeks. Um, and, and I think that, you know, your point about finding how they connected and, and, and how they drew on the, uh, how, you know, which learning strategies they decided to talk about and how they made that decision, it would right. be very important, I think, uh, to know about, and, uh, I'll see what kind of reflections I get. And, uh, I may, I'm planning on Monday dedicating because we needed <laughs> probably talking about this, um, uh, the same task because uh, I'm going to need to give them a, a, one more day of feedback, um, and so we'll see how see how that goes. But uh, I'm trying as best I can to to create a an essential question each week, um, just so it doesn't draw out. One week seems to be pretty good to explore one one good question, uh, and so I'm I'm trying to keep to that uh, that plan. So I don't want to get into too much of next week, uh, and you know, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see, yeah. see how it goes on Monday. But, but basically, that's I wanted to share this experience. I know I kind of got into the weeds a little bit, some of the details here, but I think with test-based learning, and and I really encourage everyone to share their experiences. And and I and I'm sharing my experience not because uh, it it was a particularly great, wonderful experience. I mean, I think it was. For me personally, as a teacher, it was good because for it was something that we hadn't done before with this group. Mm -hmm. And I find myself this semester in general really focusing more on test-based learning because of the way I've organized this semester, looking at one question per week and really trying to think of a series of activities per week based on that one central question. And um, it's working well for me from a planning standpoint because I, I try to change each week as much as possible the types of activities to try to keep it uh, interesting for the students so that they're not doing the same type of thing every week. Um, and so, so, but I find myself really focusing a lot this, uh, this semester on task-based learning. And I, I want to share this to encourage everyone else really to try to share their own experiences with test-based learning because what I found what I find is that you know it's it's we can kind of conceptualize test-based learning we can you know look think about it abstractly but I think until we really start sharing spe the specifics of it do we really start learning you know the the nuanced uh, approaches that task-based learning really has that 
you know, when you're talking about a task-based learning, there are many different objectives. You know, in my case, for example, it's not just language, but it's, it's, uh, it's based on content or concepts, you know, in this case, learning strategies. It's based also on how they connect with others and prior classes and prior experiences, how to merge and uh, bring together different skills yeah. uh, in the BA uh, as well, uh, which is what I try to do in my writing class. And so, um, you know, that's the thing that I want to share with, right. with everyone. And, and I still have a couple of questions. <laughs> so, uh, sure. uh, uh, I, you mentioned this is a week that took, took a little bit longer in them. So I think they, they've been working, uh, the work in this have been, uh, I don't know, like like struggling a little bit, or or maybe taking a little bit more of time according to student space. I don't know what's the reason, but uh, one of the questions that that I have for that is, uh, how dip difficult was it to keep the focus during the week towards what you what you expected to be the outcome? I think the the focus has always been has never been really a problem in the sense that. Okay. Students know every single day I post the essential question. Okay. So the, the essential question is really the through line or the main the main idea throughout the whole week, right? Mm -hmm. So they they're used to hearing uh, the, the essential question okay. every every day for that particular week. So the, the focus I didn't find was a problem. Again, I think it was just it was a challenge trying to come up with the ideas for their for the writing. And I was really trying to maintain a balance when I was giving feedback between giving them feedback on concepts and the content versus the language. Right. Of course, I have to do both. Um, but I tried not to focus, especially at the beginning of the week, I tried not to focus too much on the grammar and the punctuation and so on. Tried to get the, I tried to focus more on the concepts and trying to organize their ideas because, and this is a common you know, challenge for all writers from prope to eighth semester. You know, I would say 80% of all the feedback that I give any writing student is based on content, is based on organization. It's based uh -huh. on the topic sentence and having a topic sentence. And it has, you know, little to do with grammar and punctuation. Of course, that's, that's mm -hmm. part of it. But most of my feedback is really trying to direct students and guide them into learning how to write more coherently, even before we even talk about subject verb agreement or verb form or, or comma splices and things like that. So um, this was uh, no exception, right? This was, uh, I think, our first dive really in deep to d dive into looking at their writing, but thinking really in terms of organizing their thoughts, and really thinking about the words that they're using to communicate their ideas. So I think that was the biggest challenge. Uh, and I really anticipated some of that, again, with this word success being kind of an abstract term that um, I kind of knew that they would struggle with this. But, um, but that was really, I think, one of the main focuses that, uh, that we that we stuck to throughout the week. Oh, now Ben, when you have different students, I mean, you have uh, two groups, right? Did you work like that with both groups, right? Correct. Yeah. Right now, uh, it's like around more than thirty students, maybe. I mean, I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, the we have, and, yeah, we have like sixteen. I have eighteen students in one class, and like sixteen students. All right, class, so. a little bit more than thirty, right? So you have many minds in there, and um, and you are you are working uh, with the students thinking and students uh, and, and that that means you're working with students individuality um, how do you handle or how hard it is to hold your horses when somebody is going into a different direction and how do you know that that exactly that direction uh, it's I mean uh, sure. That, how do you know that you have to let him be and, and go ahead until he faces or when to actually uh, face him with the bitter truth that it's doing something wrong or what? How do you hold your horses in that situation? In those. Yeah, let me let me give you an example and, and you, you let me know if I'm ad addressing your, your question okay. here. But I, I had one student 
This was on Tuesday. So Tuesday, students were still working individually on their their sentences, mm -hmm. and they they weren't yet at a point where they were to work together in their paragraph. And so the students were developing their sentences, their subject plus verb plus because plus the reasons individually. And one student asked me, "Was this our topic sentence?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well." It, and I knew that it was eventually going to be, but after they got together and consolidated their ideas and so on, but we weren't there yet, right? We weren't, in th we weren't at that point in the task-based sequence, right, of what mm -hmm. we were doing for this week. So I said, well, I said, at this point, no, right? It's like, I actually, I said, I answered the question, no, it's not at this point. And then I, I kind of said that we'll talk about it later. Um, but I didn't really go into it, even though uh, she was curious and she was kind of thinking on the right track. Okay. Um, I tried to hold my horses, um, trying to hold back a little bit and just say, wait, let's just do this. Right. Uh -huh. I have some students that really are like, oh, check my work, check my work. And they're so anxious to, for me to check uh -huh. their written work without us going through this. Uh, thought process, right? I always try, especially this semester, I'm really trying to have my students go through one or two days, like Monday and Tuesday, invariably, and maybe even Wednesday. There's very little writing per se. There's mm -hmm. there's what I call pre-writing or mm -hmm. uh, writing to understand exercises where they're brainstorming, they're writing sentences, but not in a paragraph form. They're basically writing to think. They're writing to put together ideas and students really want to rush through that process. They want to get right to the, the paragraph and create that first draft. So invariably, I'll find myself, you know, telling students, okay, we're, we're not there yet. You're, you've given me the whole thing, but I, we need to back up. We need to look at, you know, this, this, and this first before we get to this point. And so I found myself that there are many cases, not many, but there's several cases where, and this is usually with the stronger students. Um, in a sense, where they're they're really anxious to get that first draft out and and get feedback from me, but um, it's usually me just trying to dial them back a little bit and say, okay, let's go back, let's step back and look at this, and and so I think as over time students become accustomed to the process, and again, this is really the focus of this class is to look at the process of writing, and. Um, you know, but there are, you know, when, when students are at a point where I'm checking all of their drafts, you know, my feedback is going to very much, very much depend on the level of each student. Mm -hmm. And I typically give feedback, like I mentioned before, I'll focus more on content types of questions or errors first or uh, global errors first that in, uh, and then I'll look on local errors. I'll depend on or focus more on local errors, which is more grammatical errors uh afterwards so i that's my approach to giving feedback and um you know i think over time students start to to get used to that but if you know if some students are further advanced and they're you know they're making different types of hairs that are more advanced uh advanced writing then i'll i'll uh, address them you know differently than students who are maybe at a, a lower level that you know have are making different types of mistakes and so I just try to differentiate basically the assessment in that sense and, uh, and try to, you know, make it clear to some students when they're not ready to hear certain things, try yeah. to make that clear uh, in the class. Okay. Good. Really, really interesting the way you're handling. I, I uh, well, as a final aspect, I, I kind of detect uh, something that, that it's part of my my, my beliefs in, in the sense of uh, uh, teaching and learning. Everything that that you come uh, that you bring to the classroom, whatever topic it is, whatever uh, area, maybe language, maybe writing, maybe uh, methodology or, or teaching aspects or, or practicum, or, or or maybe a feedback or a reflection. Anything you can think of for a classroom for for our audience, maybe it's just plain language, English, and that's it. In, in, in the sense, uh, well, it's it's unfair to say <laughs> just English and that's it, right? Because it's a white thing. But uh, uh, what I mean is that uh, any any piece you select, any language selection or context you bring, I think it all can be broken down into small pieces. 
and uh, as a puzzle, right? And uh, I think we talked about this a little bit before, uh, uh, days before. Um, and 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 there are different ways to to bring those pieces together. Uh, do you go through? I mean, the question is, do you have to go like step by step? Do you have to go two steps at a time? Uh, do you ask students to go for the whole thing and then uh, once it's done, break it down into pieces? I mean, different approaches with some of the aspects you mentioned. I already uh, kind of sense the view of what you're doing, uh, like uh, in this in this week, what you did in this week, like mostly going through the process, walking the students through the pro through the process. Uh, uh, and I think uh, it, it was it, 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 it's it looks like uh, it's it, it, it's hurt like a good example of, of a task which kind of was uh, broken into small activities during the week, in which students could uh, take it like uh, a little by little, step by step, breaking the pieces down a little bit to get to a whole. As you mentioned, somebody already came for the whole, uh, the big bite and trying to make the, the, the final outcome since the beginning. And maybe that person didn't move from that since the very beginning, but at the end he went through the process. So it's, it's a matter of, of how to handle it. And, and it, it looks like, um, not a simple task. <laughs> it's not a simple task. <laughs> yeah, and there's not one right or wrong way to do it. I think it's just a matter of sharing experiences and what works, what doesn't. I know we've talked about uh, like listening types of activities with right. with students and how they how they you know d how they approach those types of activities. And I'm really curious how others uh, look at listening types of activities, how they promote listening comprehension skills. But looking at it from a task-based approach in the sense that there are many different ways, like how do you pre-teach vocabula vocabulary first? How do you introduce the video, for example, um, or audio? But looking at the steps involved and trying different ways of, uh, uh, of really introducing language and content mm -hmm. in some meaningful way and seeing what works and what doesn't. But... I think we can look at any of the four skills. If we're teaching general English, if we're teaching English for specific purposes, technical English, looking at anything that we do and finding out what works as far as the order of sequences, the, the sequencing of, of activities. This is something that we've talked, we have talked a lot about. It's something that I think about a lot in my own teaching is, mm -hmm. is really trying to uh, establish this, uh, an order uh, in a series, especially in my case on a weekly basis, but even, you know, week to week, you know, look, looking at, okay, uh, we've, they've developed these certain skills. Now we should take it up a notch and start doing something a little bit further advanced and so on. But yeah, it's a complex uh, set of, you know, concepts here, uh, ideas that really come to uh, one's teaching practice, but I think it's worth mentioning and, and I think it's something we'll be talking a lot more about because I know that it relates to a lot of other things that we've talked about in the past with flipped learning and, mm -hmm. and materials and using different materials, but all under the context of how do we sequence our, our, our activities. Yes, and, and, and I keep the idea something that we have mentioned several times as I guess uh, this wide view of the objectives and, and where you want to get during a course, having this uh, awareness of how the resources and the task itself is gonna lead you to certain outcomes, but not just the one, the immediate outcomes of the day or maybe this week as, as, as I mean, it, it also came a moment ago about the prior week you had with a different uh, focus a little bit, but something that maybe already uh, having an impact on this week itself and may have an impact on a further week. Same thing is going to happen with the brainstorming process. Maybe they're going to keep on doing this brainstorming process or one of the aspects of the, one of the pieces of the puzzle of this week that may work better for each of them. Maybe that's what they're going to keep a little bit. And, um, uh, and I think uh, uh, that, that's covering a little bit this wide view of uh, where we want students to get as, as part of course. Yeah. And so, yeah. So for me, like next week, I'll try to think of something slightly different. It'll all be test-based, I think, but 
um, I think what I want to share with everyone is to encourage everyone really to look at look at your practice and try to mix it up a little bit to take chances to try something new. Um, you know, I and and try to take some risks. And I know this is easy to say, hard to do sometimes, especially depending on the type of school or type of context or situation that you find yourself in. But I really encourage everyone to share some of your experiences, um, either either with us in our community or with your own, with your own community there, your own school system. But start sharing as much as you can uh, some of your experiences uh, with other educators to try to see what what's what works, what doesn't work, and uh, so that we can all kind of learn together uh, some of these uh, these ways of trying to motivate our students to achieve higher outcomes. Yes, if you are watching this uh, after the live transmission in the in the on-demand uh, format, please leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about this. Uh, uh, give us some guides. Sometimes we need a little bit of support also, <laughs> and uh, and sometimes we need a little bit of um, uh, more people tagging along in these talks just to have different views and see what else can be done about it. Ben, uh, I think time has catch up again. Uh, got to us and uh, thank you very much for the talk. Very interesting, uh, this example of task-based learning. Absolutely, and thank you, Petey. And I, I want to encourage everyone to, we haven't mentioned this before, but I always include the link in Facebook. If anybody just wants to pop in and out, they don't even have to stay the whole time in our broadcast. If they just want to come in, say a few words, uh, contribute a little bit to the conversation. We're certainly open uh, to that. Again, we want to make this as conversational and open uh, as possible. It's not just us about us uh, uh, sharing our views. It's really we're really curious about how you feel about what we're talking about. So, again, feel free to come in and pop in and out of our live broadcast if you want to be part of the recording, or again, just uh, leave comments if you wish in uh, in Facebook. But thanks a lot, Petey, and thanks everyone really for. Um, for watching this recording and again leave us feedback we'll see everybody next week we'll be broadcast live every saturday morning and so we hope to see you in uh, the next broadcast thanks yes. everyone i want to thank very quickly to the guys that joined in facebook live transmission i remind you it's a secondary transmission and you do not have the better view of it because uh, there are a couple of things that are missed for example when we share screens that cannot be seen in the facebook transmission so i want to thank chio that she joins every week Julie Castillo, Chucho Arellano, Manny Olvera, Rafa Espinosa, Fanny, uh, Javier uh, de Costeñito, uh, thank you for joining for a while, Claudia Hasso, Cesar Velasquez, Tania Naí, Noemi Mora, Saraí Hasso, and uh, maybe a couple of more that are missing uh, and joining for a while. But thank you very much for watching. Rudy also, Kevin, and, and uh, Rafa Espinosa already mentioned, Rafa, thank you for joining. Uh, please leave a comment, uh, and thank you for staying for a while. Ben. All right. Great. All right. Thanks, Petey. And thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Keep on learning.